In this problem, we've been given a value for sine of theta as a ratio and told what quadrant it's in. It's between 180 degrees and 270 degrees, so that's the third quadrant. Uh, and we're being asked to find the values of cosine of theta over 2 and tangent of theta over 2, so half of the value for sine. So this is a perfect time to use these half angle identities. The thing we need for the half angle identities for every one of these is the value of the cosine. So we're going to have to figure out the cosine from the information we've been given here. And that's probably not too hard. Let's, um, let's see if we can figure out cosine theta. First of all, let me draw in uh, an angle that will represent this sine. It's in the third quadrant. It's between 180 and 270, so I know it's there. And then let me complete the, uh, the right triangle. So our ratio for the sine here is negative. Well, it's going to be negative because it's in the third quadrant. It's 1 over the square root of 5. The ratio for sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So this, the side that's opposite the angle is this one. The hypotenuse is this side right here. And the other side, if you use the Pythagorean theorem, it's going to be 2. Uh, 1 squared plus 2 squared equals 5 squared. Sorry, square root of 5 squared. 1 squared plus 2 squared equals 5. So that means our cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is also going to be a negative value because we're in quadrant 3 here, negative 2 over the square root of 5. OK, now that we've got the cosine, we have what we need to find uh, the values of theta, cosine of theta over 2 and tangent of theta over 2 using these identities. You'll remember that these identities have uh, pluses and minuses in front of them. And that's because it depends on the quadrant that your uh, angle is in. In this case, we need to be careful. We know that theta is in the third quadrant, but we don't know that theta over 2 is. In fact, it's probably not. To find where theta over 2 is, we have to divide everything by 2. If we do that, we get theta over 2 in the middle. Uh, 180 divided by 2 is 90. 270 divided by 2 is 135. So in fact, theta over 2 is somewhere between 90 and 135, which would be here. So it's somewhere in here. What that means is that for our answers, the cosine is going to be negative, because cosine is the x value. And the sine is going to be positive, although we're not looking for that. But I need to know that for the tangent. So the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So a positive over negative is also going to be a negative value. So our tangent will also be negative. So we just need to be careful about that. If we're using one of these formulas that has a plus minus, we know we're going to choose the minus value for cosine and for tangent. If we were finding sine, we'd choose the plus value here. OK, now that we've got that squared away, we can just plug our values into the formulas. We've got our cosine of theta. So if we want to find cosine of theta over 2, we'll use this formula here. And that is going to be a negative square root of 1, oops, 1 plus the cosine, which is negative 2 over the square root of 5, all over 2. And then let's do a little bit of uh, simplification here. I think I'm going to multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 just uh, to get rid of this fraction here. That's going to give us a negative square root of, and here I'm multiplying the square root of 5 by each of these terms. So square root of 5 times 1 is the square root of 5. And then this will just be a minus 2 now. And that all goes over. Uh, 2 times the square root of 5. That's all under the radical sign. And actually, I think that's where I'm going to stop it. I mean, you could fool around with trying to make that simpler, but I think that's good enough for an exact value. So that is our cosine of theta over 2. Now, with the tangent, we actually have some choices. And there are some choices that don't involve the square root, which seems less complicated to me. So I think I'm going to choose this one. We've already got the sine value. That's this value. And we've got our cosine. So this should be pretty straightforward. So it's the sine on top of the fraction. So that's a negative. Well, the whole thing is going to be negative at the end. So we'll keep that in mind. 1 over the square root of 5. And 1 plus the cosine of u. So that's 1. And the cosine is a negative. 2 over the square root of 5. And let's see, I think we can simplify this one again by multiplying by square root of 5 over the square root of 5. On top, that just gives us negative 1. 
on the bottom, that gives us the square root of 5 minus 2. And that looks pretty darn simple. So I think we'll call it there. So that is some more work with the half angle identities.